Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we'll be reviewing the Sephora Into the Stars palette that I got from the website. And as you can see, it has so many things to play around with. And this is probably one of the best gifts that you can give to someone who's a makeup enthusiast. Maybe not for someone who's a professional, but if someone wants to get into makeup, I think this is a really good choice. I got this for 65 Australian dollars and um, the shipping was free and this is what it looks like it looks really pretty and when you open the top this is where you'll find the first layer of eyeshadows that you can play around with and you'll also have the tutorial cards one for the color correcting and another for the eyeshadows now on the two sides you'll see these two indents and if you try to pull them out you'll be able to get to the other contents of the palette. So here we have the different blushes to choose from. So we have five different blushes and above that this is a mixture of bronzers and highlighters so you also have five of those. And then at the very top this is where you'll find the rest of the eyeshadows. And on the other side, at the very bottom, is where you'll find the color correcting palette. And then, oops. <laughs> and then this is where you find your brow products and also your cream eyeliners. And then here we have the lip glosses. So you have, again, a lot of product for $65. And I definitely think this is worth getting, especially if you're looking for a gift. All right, so moving on to the tutorial. Now again, I'm just an enthusiast. I'm in no way a makeup artist, so I may have made a lot of mistakes here, but again, I'm just learning as much as any other person out there. So you'll see that I have really dark under eye circles. So we'll try to do color correction, and then I'll be using this color from the palette. So you'll see that on the tutorial cards on the front of the palette as well. So I'll just be dabbing them on top of my dark under eye circles. Now the consistency Consistency is really creamy and thick, so you don't want to take too much of the product or else it might end up being cakey. So I'm just patting that under my eye with my finger because this apparently makes the product go into the skin a bit better. And now my other under eye looks a bit brighter. Okay, so I've just put them on, on both of my under eyes and hopefully it'll help with the concealing. Okay, so the next problem I have on my face is all of the redness that you can see on my cheeks, chin, forehead, nose, pretty much everywhere. So I'm going to use the green color correcting palette, which is supposed to help neutralize the redness on my face. So I'm just again going to use my finger and try to dab that around the areas that are a bit red. And to tell you guys honestly, I don't think I'll go through this process every time I do my makeup. So although the color payoff of the color correcting palette is good, I don't really think it makes that much of a difference compared to not using color correcting. Now if it was going to completely conceal my under eye circles and the redness on my face, I'd probably do it all the time I put on makeup. But honestly, this is just way too much effort to do every day just to get rid of that redness when in fact it doesn't completely cover it. And I just think that it's too much product on my face, I just want to keep it as minimal as possible. So here I'll just be quickly applying my foundation and my concealer to see how it looks or what it looks like with the color correcting in place as well. But again, we all have different opinions. Maybe this will help you if you use color correcting. If so, just go for it. If you're going to get this palette anyway, I think it's a bonus. If it's there, why not use it? All right, so this is what my face looks like with the foundation and the concealer. I can still see my dark circles and redness. Even putting on powder just to see if it will help a bit. I'm just going to fast forward this part because it's not really a part of the palette. And so with the powder, it still doesn't, it still doesn't hide my under eye circles. They're definitely still there. 
So since I've covered up all the color on my face, the next thing we'll do is bring back a bit of warmth. So I'll be bronzing using this middle color on the palette. Now I think a problem with this palette is since the pans are really small and they're really tight, it's easy for the product to get mixed together and it can be a bit messy. So here I'm just applying it to my cheekbones and I first thought that I wasn't seeing any color at all so I went back into the pan and put on more bronzer. So this was a mistake because it ended up being too intense. Um, it actually is really pigmented. You just have to make sure that you tap off the excess on the brush and there is quite a bit of kickback when you get the product off the pen. So you can see that on this cheek, it's really, really intense. But later on, I'll go back in with my damp sponge and I'll put a bit of translucent powder on it just to turn it down a bit. And of course, we have to include the nose. So I'll just be using that same bronzer on the bridge of my nose just to bring a bit of warmth to the center of my face and probably make the bridge of my nose look a little bit tinier. Although I probably don't really need to do that. I'm just doing it anyway. <laughs> Okay, so this is the moment I realized that I put way too much and it actually looks a bit patchy and a bit muddy, but it probably is my fault. I still think that the palette has good a good selection of bronzers. So yeah, probably just needed to blend a bit more and just use a bit of a lighter hand. And so after bronzing, I wanted to do blush. So I went and used the lightest color and the safest color in the palette. This um, was one of the two matte ones because the other three had shimmers in them. So I went in and again, I feel like I went in with a heavy hand. This product has a lot of fallout on the pan itself and is quite pigmented as well when you put it on the cheeks. So you just have to be a bit patient and go in with a light hand because I didn't really realize how pink my cheeks were looking. So it do I think it doesn't look that bad on camera, but in person I definitely realized how pink it was. So I went back in with my sponge, which had a bit of excess powder on it, and I tried to turn it down a little bit. But yeah, looking at the video right now, it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Now moving on to my favorite part of playing around with makeup. So this is the highlighters. They have two of them. I used the champagne one. The other one was a bit gold. So I actually like these highlighters a lot. So the, it looks really intense. It's probably because of the brush that I use. You could probably use a proper highlighter brush, which is a bit fanned out, or you could probably use your fingers if you like, but these definitely pack a punch. So you'll see that the other cheek was really, really intense. In this cheek, I tried to turn it down a little bit. But again, I think the highlighter is really nice. It isn't chunky. It gives you that subtle glow or that, again, that really big, <laughs> intense glow, depending on how much you put on your face. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think this is one of my favorite parts of the palette. Okay, so it looks like we're all shiny and shimmery and splendid. <laughs> okay, so next thing we'll do is the brows. So these, these are probably the hardest. So my brows are very uneven and they're just all over the place. I've never had my brows um, like properly groomed. So the hairs are all long and the shape's just really hard to describe. So here I'm just trying to use a pencil to outline my brow to make them both look a little bit more like sisters. The problem with this pencil that I'm using is I think that the color is a little bit on the red side. Now when it comes to doing your brows, I've learned that it's better to use something that's a bit more on the ashy side. So if you go and take a look at the brow powders 
these are the two ones that I'll be using, the lighter and the darker ones. So you definitely have more ashy tones in this palette, which I think is pretty good. With the lighter shade that I showed you earlier, I'm trying to put that towards the beginning of my brow so it doesn't look too intense or it doesn't look like it just abruptly started um, becoming really dark. So I'm going in with a light hand and again just focusing on the front of my brow. And now with that darker shade, I'm concentrating from between the middle of the brow towards the very end. And I'm just filling in the blank spaces that wasn't filled in by the pencil. So overall, I think these brow products are really good. Um, the powders in the pan have a good color selection and the color payoff is quite good as well. Maybe you could benefit from a slightly smaller brush than what I was using. And then here I'm just setting my brow hairs in place with the, I think this is the Essence Brow something, <laughs> brow gel. Now we're moving on to the scariest part for me, which is the eyes. So this shade I'll be putting all over my lid so that the other eyeshadows will go on evenly and hopefully this will help with the blending as well. So I'm just putting that again all over the lid. You don't see much color because again, it's a really light shade that I went for. But next I'll be using this shade, which will be my transition. So I'll be putting this on my crease and I'll just be using a windscreen wiper motion until it looks like it's blended out. Okay, so that looks a bit blended. Now the next thing I do as I go in with this shadow, which I will put on my outer corners, and this will look a bit messy. So I don't think I did a good job when it came to blending out the product. Maybe I also didn't clean my brush properly because it's important to keep on cleaning your brush if you're gonna be using the same brush throughout the whole eye look. So yeah, it kind of looks too intense, but Again, the purpose of this video is just to let you know what the quality of the pot of the palette is and not really to showcase my makeup skills because I hardly have any, as you can see. <laughs> oh no, look at that. Okay, <laughs> next I'll go in with this foiled shade, which I actually quite like a lot. I use my finger for this because I think it'll look a bit better with a finger than with a brush. So I'm, that, I'm just patting that onto the inner corner until the middle of my lid, just to give a bit of dimension. And again, I'm not really sure about anything that I'm doing here. I'm just swinging it. And I think the end product doesn't look too bad, but again, I've never done eyes before. Like I usually just use one shade, which is most of the time my bronzer, and just put that all over my crease or my lid, and that's all I ever do. <laughs> so here I'm taking the transition shade and putting it on my lower lash line. And then I'm putting that on the other eye as well. And then I'll go back into the palette and take that foiled color that I put on my inner corner and also apply that to the inner lower lash line. And then lastly, I'll get that outer color that I used on my lid and put that on the outer um, lower <laughs> eyelash like that. 
And the next thing that I did is I just put on a bit of mascara on my upper and lower lashes and then use this lip gloss on my lips. So I don't have a lip brush, so I'm just using my finger and I decided to go for the darkest shade in the lip gloss palette because I just wanted to see how pigmented it was. So of course they're not claiming that this is lipstick. Again, this is just lip gloss, so this would look way better if you put it on top of lipstick. But it actually does give a tint which I think is really nice. So if you don't want it to be too intense, you could just go in with the lip gloss. But of course, this won't last you all day. Most likely, if you eat, it'll come off. And guys, this is the final look with all of the Sephora um, products in the palette. I unfortunately didn't use the cream eyeliners because I didn't have a brush for them. But... With all the products that I use, I can definitely say that it's worth getting. Thank you so much for dropping by. Please don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave a comment down below, and I hope that I'll get to see you again in my next video. Thank you!